a father of revenge, forever and ever? Thus saith the Lord. Men have imagined hell as a place of eternal torture, where they believe that all those who have disobeyed my mandates will go. And in the same way, they have created a hell for great faults. They have imagined another place for lesser faults, as well as one more for those who have done neither right nor wrong. Those who say that in the hereafter there is neither rejoicing nor suffering are not telling the truth. No one is without suffering, nor exempt from rejoicing. Afflictions and joys will always be mixed, as long as the spirit does not attain the supreme peace. Listen, O oh my people, hell is within the incarnated and discarnate in dwellers of this world and the spiritual realm. Hell is a symbol of great pain, of terrible remorse, of desperation, of suffering, and bitterness of those who have sinned greatly. And from those consequences, they will be liberated according to the evolution of their spirit towards love. Glory, on the other hand, which symbolizes happiness and true peace is for those who have withdrawn from earthly passions in order to live in communion with God. Question your conscience and you will know if you are living in hell, if you are atoning for your faults, or if you are vibrating with the peace of glory. What men call glory or hell are not predetermined places, it is the essence of your deeds, which your spirit gathers when it reaches the spiritual realm. Each one lives his hell, inhabits his world of atonement, or enjoys the happiness which the elevation and harmony with the Divine Spirit offers. Just as man on earth can create a spiritual peace for himself, similar to the peace of my kingdom, he can also, with his perversity, surround himself with an existence like a hell, made of vice, evil, and remorse. In the hereafter, the spirit can also find worlds of darkness, of perversity, of hatred and vengeance, according to the spirit's degree of confusion, low passions, and desires. But truly I say to you, that the heaven as well as the hell, which men visualize only through earthly figures and images, are no more than different stages of the spirit's evolution. One stage is the highest level of perfection achieved by a spirit through its evolution and virtue, and the other is a stage where the spirit lives in an abyss of darkness, vices, and confusion. To the virtuous spirit, it makes no difference where it finds itself, for wherever it may be, will carry within the peace and the love of the Creator. On the other hand, the impure and disturbed spirit can find itself in the best of worlds, but will continue to feel itself burning with remorse until it becomes purified. Do you believe that I, your father, have created places specifically for the purpose of punishing you? and thus eternally avenging your offenses? How foolish are the men who continue to teach those theories? How is it possible for you to believe that eternal darkness and pain are the destiny awaiting spirits, which, though having sinned, will always be children of God? If they need be taught, here is the teacher. If they need love, here is the Father. If they yearn for forgiveness, here is the perfect judge. The one who never seeks me, correcting his faults, will be unable to reach me. But no one will be able to resist my justice, nor my trials. You can only reach me 
when you are pure. Among so many mansions within the house of the Father, there does not exist a single world of darkness. His light is in all of them. However, if the spirits penetrate into them with a veil over their eyes due to ignorance, how can they be able to behold that splendor? If you ask a blind person here in the world what he sees, he will answer, only darkness. It is not that the sunlight does not exist, rather that he is not able to see it. I say to you during this period, do not accept the idea of hell that humanity has accepted. There is no more hell in this world other than the life that man has created with his wars and hatred. And in the spiritual valley, there is no fire other than the great remorse that the spirit feels when its conscience shows it its errors. Those who, in their religious fanaticism, only await the punishment of hell in the beyond, while holding that belief, are themselves forging their own hell. For the confusion of the spirit is similar to that of the human mind, but more powerful. You ask, Master, is there salvation for them? I tell you, there is salvation for everyone, but peace and light will come to that spirit when the darkness of the disturbance has gone. Have you ever felt pity for someone whose mental illness makes him see things that do not exist? How much greater would be your sorrow upon seeing those disturbed beings in the beyond as they look into their imaginary hell? Do not tremble before these revelations. On the contrary, enjoy thinking that this word comes to destroy the concept of eternal punishment that you have had and all the interpretations that you have been given of eternal fire in the past. Fire is the symbol of pain, of the regrets and repentance that torment the spirit. Purifying it as gold is purified in the crucible. In that pain is my will, and in my will is love for you. If it were true that fire was what punished human sin, then the bodies of all who have sinned would have to be thrown into the fire here on earth, while alive. The dead would not feel it, because their bodies never ascend to the spiritual space. Rather, when their mission is concluded, they return to the bowels of the earth, where they merge with nature, from which they took life. But if you believe what you call eternal fire is not for the body, but for the spirit, that too is a serious mistake. For in the spiritual realm, there are no material elements, nor does fire act upon the spirit. What is born of matter is matter. What is born of the spirit is spirit. My word does not descend to attack any belief. If someone believes such, they are gravely in error. My word comes to explain the content of all that which has not been duly interpreted, and which therefore has produced confusions that have been transmitted from generation to generation among humanity. What worth would my law and my doctrine have if they were not able to save spirits from error and sin? And what purpose would my coming as a man to the world have had if there were to be many who would be lost forever in endless atonement? Some are motivated to do good works because they are fearful that death might surprise them having no merit to present to the Lord. Others leave off evil only from fear of dying in sin and having to withstand after this life the eternal torment of hell.
How deformed and imperfect is that God in the form that so many imagine? How unjust, monstrous, and cruel! Together, all the sins and crimes that men have committed could not compare with the perversity of the punishment in hell for all eternity, to which, according to them, God condemns His children who sin. Have I not explained to you that the greatest attribute of God is love? Do you not believe then that eternal torment would be the absolute negation of the divine attribute of eternal love? You believe that heaven is a region in the infinite, and that you can get there by means of a sincere repentance of your faults at the hour of your material death, being confident that you will be pardoned at that instant and carried by me to the kingdom of heaven. That is what you believe. But I tell you that heaven is not a place, nor a region, nor even a mansion. Heaven is your elevation and perfection. It is your state of purity. In whom does it lie to permit you to enter heaven? In me, who has always been calling you, or in you? Who have always been so slow. Cease limiting the infinite, the divine. Do you not understand that if heaven were as you believe, a mansion, a particular place, then it would not be infinite? It is time that you conceive of the spiritual in a more elevated way, so that although your idea may not encompass all the reality, it will at least come close.